I'm good. Um, how are you though? That's actually the more important question. Are you doing okay? How are you holding up? Oh man. Um, thank you for asking that actually really trying to be good, really trying to like, um, keep positive. It's just, it's very hard. Like, um, I had to drop out of school um, this semester. I reached out to my professors right in the middle of like the communication. Um, I got news that one of my childhood friends back home was arrested. The semester started and then a couple of days after there was like the news that um, Masa Amini, Masa Jina Amini was murdered by the morality police in Iran. And I say morality because there's no morality in it. There's been mixed reporting, but it seems that the morality police might be dismantled, but like that, that it's already sort of been reimagined with the morality pe police. Yes. And so it's not so, really uh, indication necessarily of success as much as appeasement maybe globally. So here's the thing, right? And the Islamic Republic and a lot of other countries, China, even America, like whenever there is a movement, like there's an actual movement and then there's the like news and the propagandas and everything else, um, which that's like half the battle, right? So half of the battle we have is trying to raise awareness that first of all, the government doesn't tell the truth, right? And so one of their biggest moves at the moment is to like make propagandas that we're actually good um, or we're actually changing, right? Um, and then there is like the misinformation also that goes around um, from the regime. We had apparently before the morality police, another sort of like police. Yeah, I wrote it down, Star Allah Patrol. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know which one's worse, to be honest. They're, they sound very similar. They do the exact same job um, under the same. Yeah, I mean, I just like think it's just kind of rebranded so they could try to hide that they were going to do the same exactly. thing. The attorney general said they did or they're dismantling it. But then there was already like a correction saying that wasn't true. So it's kind of up in the air, even <laughs> if they're pretending to dismantle the mandatory hijab law is being revisited. But I'm sure. uh, so here's what. I've heard, and here's what a lot of people say. If the Islamic regime, the Islamic Republic, wants to dismantle the compulsory hijab laws, it's literally like shooting itself in the head. Because that's like their most fundamental pillar of their constitution. And it's not something that they can just like change, right? And okay. if they do, they are admitting defeat. Although a lot of the like reformists, the um, lobby, so one of their most famous one is Nayak in America. There are people, women called Parastu, which is, um, it's the name of a bird in Iran. So a lot of women right now are getting paid by the lobby and the reformists to go out without a hijab. And they're doing all of this to say like, oh, look, we're changing like you guys didn't want hijab and we're taking it away right so um it's all a front it's all to show like propaganda the un is revisiting iran's placement on the un women's rights council um december 14th i believe do you think if they're removed that will have an impact on anything or do you think it's just kind of i think it would you know um one of the thing with this regime is Let's imagine um, Taliban at the moment, right? This regime is no no different than Taliban, really. Um, the only difference between this regime and Taliban at this very moment is that they, this regime is very legitimized. So they are sitting on the UN Committee okay, yeah. of Women's Rights, right? That's it's literally a, yeah. like in 30 years, Taliban sitting there. It's, it's no yeah, different. That's a really good it is point. No different. This, like the constitution, the Islamic regime's constitution states that women are half of a man. It's, yeah. it's in the constitution. The other problem with the constitution is that under the constitution, the constitution cannot change. 
So if so it can't be amended at all. Like if, if the con- no. like if, it, if it, it's so in it's written in the constitution. If it changes, it's void. Yes. Yes. So they didn't even give so her a there chance. There is no changes to be done to the. It's basically like if you were to like change the Bible, like there is no changes to be made. The rule of this uh, like Sharia law, um, which is like the extremist Islamic laws, in which literally states that women are half of a man. To to think that like okay, we're gonna take away the um you know the compulsory hijab law, like okay. I'm still going to be half of my brother, right? I'm still going to be worth half of a man. Women were not able to allow, uh, sorry, were not allowed to vote for a long time after the revolution. And we're talking about a, a country that women and men were mostly very equal before the revolution, right? We were one of the only countries in the world that had ministry for women's, women's rights and actual like, um, you know, Council for Women's Rights and everything before the revolution. Even going back um, like centuries, like the Persian culture in general before Islam came to uh, to, to Iran, because um, Iran and Persia were not Muslim originally or Zoroastrians. So right. before before Islam came, um, women were pretty much equal to men. Like that's the religion, and that's like. Um, even when you go back, there are a lot of like female general, uh, like war generals and female, you know, um, females just in society. And after that, it was just one of those things that we had to abide by the new religion. And so a lot of Iranians actually migrated. That was like one of the biggest mass migration of Iranians who all left Iran or Persia back then and went to India. So it's like a lot of people are like, oh, that's your culture. No, this is not our culture. So you were colonized. That's it's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That is, that is exactly yeah. What I'm saying. Yeah. So a lot of people know of the, you know, the white man colonization, the Christian colonization, the, you know, European imperialism, but there is a, there is such a thing as like Chinese imperialism as well. Oh, absolutely, um, China has also attacked other countries trying to like um, change well, their Islam culture. Is, is, a, is a religion of imperialism. There, it's literally like you know, like that's the warring tribes. Exactly, like, yeah. exactly. Just as much as the Christians went to Africa and yeah. colonized and turned those like cultures into Christians, Muslims did the same. Sort of this iteration of the left, because I don't think this current functioning of the left is very left at all, but there's a lot of fear around any kind of phobe. So I think people are very reluctant to criticize Islam or anything is like, because they're then they're, they're worried about being called Islamophobic, you know? And there's a lot of like, all the bad is white man's fault kind of thing. And it's very, it, it lacks, entirely lacks nuance. But I do want to ask, so do you think that um, because because Iran was colonized, because of, you know, women's equality prior to the uh, revolution, do you think that's a big part of why the culture has continued on in terms of being like Iranian women being some of the high, most highly educated women in the world, without a doubt in the Middle East, but even in the world, um, yeah, much more of a, of a position in STEM, especially, you know, compared to American women, I can't remember the exact percentage, but um, do you think that, that it's residual from, from before? I would say so. So actually, yeah. let, me, um, let me just go back to the last point for a minute, sure. just because I consider myself a um, intersectional feminist, and that's where me and you have like disagreements a little. And um, I also consider myself a leftist, which unfortunately, since this movement, I've realized that a lot of leftists are, um, as you say, like are very scared of just being labeled something that they don't take a stand when they need to, right? Um, For me, I care for human rights. I don't care where it is. To me, like that's something that I care for. Um, And therefore, if 
I need to take a stand, I will take a stand. I don't give a shit if someone's going to be like, oh, you're like this phobic or that phobic. Like, no, um, just because, and I say it all the time and people get very angry here. And I'm like, you cannot just say China is a good state just because um, America and China disagree. People in China are not I happy. Very, I am very weirded out by people kind of like giving props to China these days. I see it more and more. And I'm like, yes, if it's not communist in any way, shape or form. It's That's very- what I'm saying. Like the very, the most like fundamental pillar of communism is workers seize the means of production, right? Yeah. And I, you cannot tell me a country that has the <laughs> most number of sweatshops and child workers that that is and the common. and the and the, I don't and the give two shit about how many fast uh fast to speed like railways they have. I don't give a shit when they are built by slaves. I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. And the problem is that like the Chinese government, the Iran- the Islamic regime's government, the Islamic Republic, they are now like the faces of like anti-imperialism, anti-capitalism. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's literally a um, imperialist system functioning in Iran. And they are, they're pretending to be like anti-imperialist. Like, bro, they have been put in, like, it was a, it was a CIA back coup that brought them there. I'm starting to believe in the horseshoe theory, which says like oh, the more yeah. you go to the left, the more you're going close to the right. And I'm like, yeah, at this point, a lot of the leftists are literal fascists. It's a perversion of the very values that they claim to. Yes. I, like, yeah, it was so I, I mean, I'm, I'm politically on the left, like the traditional left, yes. the traditional liberalism. I don't, I don't know what the hell's going it's- so fucked up. I think fascism really, like Mussolini himself said, fascism should be called corporatism. It is the marriage of corporate and government state power. And it's, I look at tactics when I look at fascism. I don't look at it as a nationalistic fervor or is it necessarily racial? It's, it's compelled speech. It's police thought. It's censorship. It's like, you know, it's the state and corporate merger. It's who it's, it's the state having a complete stranglehold on like all, all kind of cultural apparatus, you know? And, and I feel like people immediately hear fascism and they think Nazis and that's not necessarily the case. You know, I'm not saying that Islam is bad or anything. I'm not saying that, but I'm literally saying that like the majority of our culture is still very much entwined with like the Persian culture so for us to like take away our culture from us it's very painful and we're literally facing trauma for that and now to answer your question about the woman in a stem i feel like one of the reasons why us iranian especially women are very much in stem is because culturally women and men have been pretty equal um all around and now that this regime is literally saying okay women are half of men right I remember one of the reasons why my parents wanted me to be a doctor was because they were like you are a woman and you need to be able to take care of yourself no matter what right like you need that protection a lot more than your brother does because your brother can he's literally one full person there was no like emphasis on him like becoming a doctor or anything or like you can choose whatever you want but pega has to be something that she can take care of herself and not have to be dependent on a man because the the constitution already says that she must be dependent on a man i cannot get a I cannot open a bank account in Iran without like my dad's permission. I cannot get a password without my dad's permission. I cannot leave the country without his permission. What if he passed away or something? If I didn't have a brother, like if I was an only daughter, it'd be my dad's father. And since he's passed up, um, it would be my dad's brother. So my uncle. If I didn't have an uncle, it would be some other man from them from my dad's side, not from my mom's side. 
because okay. your mom is not is not really relevant oh. in Iran, which is fucked up. <laughs> It's very fucked up because again, like our culture, we don't even change last names when we get married. We're still like, like you still keep your identity after you get married. And it's, it's one of those things that like after the revolution, women weren't like even the legal guardian of their children. And it's, it hits hard. What you um, would like the world around the Western world primarily, because that's, you know, who my reach is with and, and Americans to know right now or what you'd like them to do. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking that because I always say if you have a cause, any cause, if it's human rights, if it's women rights, if it's freedom of speech, if it's animal rights, if it is the climate, if whatever it is, right? If you care for anything, you have to care for Iran right now, because what is happening in Iran, it's beyond just a woman uprising. Um, we're having, as we speak right now, we're having um, ethnic genocide in Kurds and Baluch. So if you care about any sort of like indigenous culture. I didn't know about the genocide. Can you can you speak on that for a second? Absolutely. So we in iran we have multiple ethnicities it's a lot actually and two of the most oppressed ethnicities are there are muslim but they are not um shia muslim they're sunni muslims so there is the court in the east in the western um, border and then there are the Baluch in the eastern uh, border who are both Sunni Muslims and as we are speaking right now there has they're literally in civil war the government it's attacking them nonstop and has been doing it for as long as the revolution has been has been going on so almost oh. 70 days now yeah they have lost many countless people countless children countless women countless men everyone um so it's it's an actual genocide happening and these are the again these are two of the ethnicities in iran that have been extremely oppressed so the baluch in the western region uh, on the border they are so poor that and so poor and so oppressed that they cannot even have birth certificates most of them do not have birth certificates. We are talking about a provenance that has gold mines, that has some of the most important mines in Iran, and they are facing some of the worst cruelties and genocide at the moment. The courts on the eastern region also are some of the bravest people i mean we've seen the court outside of iran because there are courts in turkey and iraq and syria i believe as well kurdish women literally are one of the reasons why isis was not able to you know kill more people than it did because they are such brave people and a lot of people say they're like, I always thought why like Baluch and Kurds live on the borders of Iran. And it's because the border could not move once it got to them, right? They're very brave people and extremely oppressed. There is this very common thing in Kurdistan. So the Kurdish region called, um, they're called cool bears, um, which are people who need to smuggle like food, basic goods and whatnot from other countries because Kurdistan just doesn't get that from Iran. They did such a horrendous genocide in Baluchistan that they ran out of blood, straight up, no blood. Um, the entire country were going out to giving, you know, like donating blood. Um, the same thing happened in Kurdistan not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago. And they blocked blood coming into that region. This is this is the cruelty we're talking about oh, here. Yeah. It's not just it's not just women have to wear hijab. 
why did that kind of civil war start along with the, with this protest? I thought at first you might be going on since the revolution for four, but then you said 70 days. So it, it started, it started again with the protests. Yes. Were, yes. What, were yes. the women revolting with the hijabs or was it just kind of an excuse yes. to be violent against? Okay. Oh, no, it was definitely like one of those things of like, they wanted an excuse to like kill more of this ethnic people, especially again, especially because they are not Shia Muslims, they're Sunni Muslims. Okay. So it's so fucked up. I don't know if you know, but Muslims go for prayers in, on Fridays, right? It's like the mass prayer. It's very important to Muslims. So Sunnis do that in Balochistan every, every Friday. And every Friday, the regime goes and just like massacres them while they're praying. So don't call us Islamophobes. Do not call us Islamophobes. This has nothing to do with us disliking Islam. We have Muslims against theocracy. You cannot tell us that we need to shut up and not be Islamophobes because we're speaking against a theocracy. This is the first, you're the first person I've talked to that said that they're, is yeah. it, do you think because you you move in more left, left, I can't say it without quotes, left circle? Yeah. Um, no, I think it's just because I'm, it's something that like the West just doesn't give a shit to talk about. And it's something that like us Iranians have been trying to raise awareness. And the West has been so fast with like calling us liars on trying to like raise awareness on a genocide of like the 15,000 people and in bars. Like they were so fast with that. Are these like online people comments or or things that like us Iranians are very well aware of as, as of now, because we're. So it's so sad because like one of the things that this regime has done and has done such a good job at was dividing us, right? Uh, it's, um, I don't know if you've heard, read George Orwell's 1984, but it's one of those things oh, yeah. that like you don't trust anyone, right? You're like, like literally growing up, <laughs> the very, like one of the very few things that your parents tell you when they're dropping you off for school, like the first day, they're like, if they ask you if you pray at home, say yes, we all pray at home. Like, if they tell you, do you have satellite TV? Tell them, no, we don't. And I was like, but we do. And they were like, yes, you need to lie. Taliban don't allow women going to school. In Iran, we're not allowed to go to school if we don't wear a job. Yeah, I know. By the time you're seven, right? We're you have talking- to. Yes. We are talking about people who are not even Muslim. Iran has the second largest Jewish population in the Middle East after Israel. These people have to wear hijab, right? We're talking about, and then a lot of people are like, that's not a gender apartheid regime. Like, stop saying that. At Someone the same is time, literally right? telling you that Iran's not a gender apartheid regime. We are people telling the left, the left are telling me that it's not a gender apartheid. And I'm like, well, that is insane. Like, I was the other day, I was I just I, like, what is what it? propaganda is infesting these people's brains that they're going to say that to you? Some people are, are very like, that is. <laughs> They just, and this is one of the other things that like a lot of people right now are saying that, oh my God, what is happening in Iran? It's such a Zionist movement. And I'm like, no, no, do not call us Zionists. The only reason why they are calling us Zionists is because us Iranians are saying not for Palestine, not for Lebanon, but I will give you my life for Iran. And they are saying that this is Zionist. Like, first of all, why do you think you're entitled to the life of Iranians? Why do you think that Iranians have to die for Lebanon or Palestine, right? Like, that is not our country. Why should we die for it? First of all. Secondly, we're not waging war against either of these countries. We're saying we don't want to die for these countries. And the reason why we're actually saying that is because for 43 years that this regime has been where it is, it has done, it has committed genocide, it's committed femicide, it's committed child murder. There is, under the constitution of the Islamic Republic, there is no penal code for rape. If you go and say you've been raped, you, as a woman, you will get 
like punished. We had a case a couple years ago, I think it was a 16 or a 13 year old girl who was arrested. And in her court, she brought up that she was being raped by her um, prison guard. They gave her the death sentence. They gave her the death sentence for bringing up that she was being raped. And they ra- they like killed her within days. Like a within days, they just like girl? yes. And then to wash their hands farther from this thing, they said that she was twenty three years old. When like you can you can just look at the picture and be like, no, she's a child. Um, so we're talking about a government that has. That is has been oh like all of these horrific crimes and for 43 years has been going on saying that Israel is, is an enemy of humans because they're committing like one third of what they are doing in Iran to Iranians that Israel is doing to Palestinians. And we're tired of it, right? I read a really good tweet from a Palestinian um, public figure who was like, a stop using Palestine as a washing cloth for your crime. You cannot commit crime somewhere and be like, Israel is doing it worse. Like, stop it, right? Stop stop using yeah, Palestine. What about is it has got to go? That is, it's, it it's really real hard. To go. It. When the movement started, a lot of Palestinians, for some reasons, and a lot of people who support them, and I support them. Iranians, we support them. We faced atrocities ourselves. We know how fucked up it is to live in a country that is oppressing you and we are facing it from our own government right so we're extremely for palestines but for all of them to go out of their way to discredit us to talk against us and to support our oppressors only because they're they think that like by like now that people are watching Iran and they're giving their support that they no longer have support to give to Palestine. I'm like, that's not how it works. Do you think a lot of it has to do with the financial contributions too? So that's another thing that we're very upset and we're like, not for Lebanon, not for Palestine, I'll give my life for Iran. is because we are one of the wealthiest countries, right? We have so much oil, we have we have gold, we have so much natural resources. And we are having like some of the worst poverty. Our currency is the cheapest in the world right now. Our our password is the least is one of the like least powerful passwords. Like we can go nowhere with that. <laughs> nowhere, I'm telling you. Um and it's so fucked up. It's just one of those things that like, I saw a, there is a misery index. They score a country based on like how miserable it is. And Iran was more miserable than Palestine. So you cannot tell me that us Iranians are having a wonderful time and we're just being entitled. We're not. We have so much uh, resources and all of these resources are going out of our country and being honestly spent I don't know where um but we know for for a fact that Hamas is getting a lot of it we know for a fact that Hezbollah in Lebanon is getting a lot of it and actually they they sent people over right now to Iran to help with suppression like a plane going down they always say help yourself before you help others like how on earth are you me to like care for other places than I myself and we do like us Iranians we still stand up for everything we stood up for Black Lives Matter in 2020 we stood up for Ukrainians we stood up for anything like you name it we stood up we stood up for it and for the like international community to just be like Islamophobes it's very sad it's just one of those things that like we're talking about How can Americans do more to help. I mean, continue posting, continue raising awareness, put pressure yes. on, on um, our lawmakers. Honestly, but... Again, I really wish for Americans to whatever cause they have, right? As I was saying, whatever cause you have, search that in Iran and you'll see that that right we don't have. And if you have any cause, please, please, please stand up with us. Um, again, you don't have to care for everything that's happening in Iran, 
and that's one of the like beauties that I'm seeing in like a lot of the Native Americans standing up with us because again like it's they know what's what it's like to have like your ethnicity cleansed right it's Mm -hmm. so fucked up but it's like when you face when you experience oppression I feel like you're more understanding of like what's happening so it's very beautiful to see that and I really encourage people to just like google um whatever your cause is and search that in Iran right now animal activists are in prison environmental activists are in prison women rights activists are in prison children rights activists are in prison singers are in prison artists are in prison actors are in prison inventors are in prison scientists are in prison um and the government is being run by some embezzle <laughs> embezzlers right they literally embezzle money and they live these are people living in canada in america in london in europe and they're living wealthy ass lives they're living such a comfortable life by the blood money of iranians they are spreading false information right now because they care for their money and not for people. These are people who have, like me and my family, my my uncle who I loved so dearly died at age of 28 and I was not able to go back to like attend his funeral. And we're talking about like a oh, sorry. government, just like their entire family, 5,000 members of the Iranian regime's children are living outside Iran. What an amazing country could that be that they don't want it for their own children? We're contacting our, you know, um, representatives in America. We're contacting, you know, people in the council for like the Iran. uh, There is like an actual special council of like, dealing with Iran we're contacting those people and they're being radio silent unfortunately because they're being lobbied by Nayak um the Islamic regime's lobby and it's very heartbreaking to see that a um organization whose head cannot even speak Farsi is enjoying the blood money of Iranians taking the regime side right um I one other thing that's very important to me is that please stop saying sanctions are the problem. So you don't want more sanctions. You don't. We want, we want to stop more talking. sanctions. We want more, more sanctions. sanctions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On Iran and the diplomats. So one of the reasons why my uncle passed away was because Iran imported impure blood for cheap from France. This is not a government that gives a shit about people and. This is a this is a government we're talking about. It has nothing to do with the with the um, sanctions. This is a government. Also, I did not know that, but the supreme leader's brother, sister, and niece are against him. They know what a dictator he is. His sister and brother have been in prison for years. This is a dictator we're talking about that shows no mercy to his own sister and brother and we're talking about a dictator whose sister and brother does not support wow i feel like it's one of those things that like we really need to hear more from iranians um as, as i was saying a lot of people tell me that you're in the diaspora, like your opinion or your experience doesn't matter because you're not in Iran. And that f- frustrates me a lot because I'm hearing my family back home. I'm speaking yeah. with my friends back home. I still have friends. I still have family. And you're telling me that my experience, your experience is, is false. Another thing is that, as you said, like fascism is a corporate system iranian regime really knows where to spend its money and it has been in the liberal um media and the democratic candidates campaign contributors is iranian regime yeah 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 
um, Biden literally one of the first few executive orders that he signed the second he became president was to take away sanctions on the Iranian diplomats. We've been very vocal. We've been asking. It's so fucked up because my my grandma was not able to get a visa to come for both of her grandchildren's birth. She wasn't given a visa. This is we're talking about like Obama's time. We're not talking about like Trump or anything. She wasn't allowed to come, but the diplomat the diplomats are able to come. Even during what was happening, we had Iranian parliament members coming in America, people who voted to expedite executions in Iran on the prisoners. Also, this is not a possibility. This is something that Iran has already done in the past. In 88, they um, they executed around um, 30,000 people. This is, so basically um, the revolution started with a lot of people just like you know the 70s and the cold war a lot of people were like oh communism it's interesting and there were publications there were you know groups and um the shah was very close friends with carter and carter was like why don't you just imprison them and close your publications so that's where the protests started people were angry that their publications were being closed and you know their friends and families were being arrested and carter was like why don't you just execute them so he did that wow i did people not more angry, right um people get more angry and also we're talking about a government that has already faced a coup uh, in the 50s when our prime minister, um, democratically elected prime minister, nationalized oil industry and um, UK and US were like, no, 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 this is our oil <laughs> for some reasons. And they coup d'etat and um, overpower, overthrew the, the prime minister. And so they were really hoping for no, you know, like um, socialism, no communism, no leftism really in the region because, you know, cheap oil. Um, so when they saw that there is a possibility of, you know, people wanting more, um, you know, communism, they were like, we need to stop this. The funny thing is that the only group that had capitalism specifically in their ideologies was Khomeini, um, Khomeini's um, like group. And he was the only person who did not get arrested or executed and was somehow exiled to Paris of all places. So it was kind of like just like going for at least like a couple years, this just happening. And there are actually letters between Khomeini and CIA um, where Khomeini is like, yeah, if I'm like the leader of Iran, you guys will get cheap oil. No worries. Oh, I um, believe that 100%. <laughs> yeah. And so That's it's funny. so funny because the second the Shah was like, you know what? Maybe I should stop listening to Carter. Maybe I should do some reforms. Maybe I should start selling oil for more expensive. And the second he was like, he, the second he raised the prices, um, Carter was like, you know what was really calm down the protest? If he left the country. That's literally, like, these are literal videos. Like, there are videos of, like, Carter saying this shit. Um, so Shah and his family leaves Iran. They go to um, Egypt. Um, his first wife was Egyptian. So they went to Egypt. They still have very good relations. A um, couple of days later, I think it's like 27 days later, Khomeini and his troop um, landed in Iran, in Tehran, via a Air France flight. Took over. It's, it's, it's the 70s, right? It's no social media. Like, a lot of people are saying that, like, people wanted Khomeini. It's it's the same. Yeah, the US government right? installed them. The only people yeah, who yes. listen to 
who knew what Khomeini was and who Khomeini was was people who were listening to BBC. Um, so BBC had a Persian channel as well, and they were like BBC Persian, and that's all they showed was like the Iranian, sorry, the Khomeini's stuff, and like um, on the radio was just like Khomeini shit, and like literally not many people knew who he was. Um, and the referendum that happened was so fucked up. They were literally saying, vote yes or no on you wanting this regime without knowing what their constitution is. It's literally that was the written. They were like, although there is no constitution, say that you agree to accept this constitution for what it is. And they were like, sure, um, which was so fucked up. And a lot of people say no, said no, but no one really talks about that. But yeah, this is a coup d'etat that happened yeah. to overthrew the, you know, communism. A lot of um, leftists were executed. All of the names of the leftists were given and executed and also was given to the CIA. Um, so this is this is one of those like very fucked up like moments. Um, so whenever people call it a revolution, just be like, that's not a revolution. Um, stop calling it that. Iranians didn't want it. To be honest, we didn't want it. Well, I didn't know that about Carter. This has been amazing. Um, thank you again. Uh, yeah, there are literally videos of Carter saying, I asked my wife, where do you want to be for Christmas? And she said, there is no place I'd rather be and no family I'd rather be with this Christmas than Shah and his palace in Tehran. There's like literal video of him like saying that as oh, he's giving a like um, toast on Christmas in, in the palace in Tehran. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks again. Yeah, this is amazing. So much, I'm excited friend. to post this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to cut it down because it's just so much incredible information that you've yeah, given I'm me. I'm sorry. So much. No, to I mean, I might. I was just like, I'm just brainstorming my head. I was like, this is like this Carter stuff is fascinating. Um, but I want to yeah. give, you know, um, I might even make it just a separate clip of that. Um, That'd be but, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank and you so I'm going to stop this recording. Yes.